If you look closely, you'll see a miniature game of Snake. As we get closer, the individual red, green, and blue lights that make up a single pixel become visible. These are subpixels, and in this version of Snake, they're part of the playing field. I discussed the making of this game in a previous video, but I only showed it running on my iMac screen. A pixel doesn't always look like this. There are actually a variety of subpixel geometries that are used to create the images we see on our screens. And for this video, I thought it might be fun to find the one that leads to the strangest version of this game. I'll put some time codes down below if you want to skip around, but let's start off with the OLED version of the Nintendo Switch. OLEDs are known for their deeper blacks, and you can definitely see that here. You'll also notice a strikingly different subpixel design. On OLED displays like this, the subpixels don't always have the same lifespan or luminance efficiency, both of which play a factor in subpixel design. Here's what the game looks like when played on a standard switch. This is just a typical RGB stripe pattern, but rotated 90 degrees so that the red subpixel goes across the top of the pixel. Up close, it's easy to see how much nicer the OLED screen is over the LCD screen. And just for good measure, here's what the game looks like when played on a Nintendo DS. Again the RGB stripe pattern, but now it's rotated so that the blue subpixel goes across the top. I'm not sure why the standard switch and the Nintendo DS use different geometries, but I'm guessing it may come down to cost or the suppliers that were used. And just so there's no confusion, this game isn't in the Nintendo eShop. In each of these cases I'm playing through a web browser. In the case of the Switch, there's actually a secret web browser that's accessible through its settings menu. Also, I was curious as to what browser Nintendo was using for this, so I wrote a script to check, and apparently it's something called Nintendo Browser, which is built on top of WebKit. Now before I get too far into things, let me explain how I'm playing and recording on these different devices. In my first video, I was manually playing while recording with a microscope, and that was just unbearably hard. So for this video, I created a game runner that will play the game for me, so I can just sit back and record what it's doing. Here you can see I control the speed of the snake, the zoom level of the page, the route the snake takes, the colors used for the subpixels, and the game orientation. Also, I'm not rewriting the game for each subpixel geometry, I'm just seeing what it looks like on different displays. Of all these options, zoom is probably the most important, as it helps line up the device's pixels with the browser's CSS pixels. Thankfully alignment wasn't too much of an issue, except for one type of device, TVs. For example, this TV has a BGR stripe design, and because the pixels aren't lined up correctly, it winds up looking like some crazy mutant version of Snake. No matter how slowly I tweaked the zoom, I wasn't able to get the pixels to align. Here's another TV. This one looked less bad, but it still refused to align. Also, in case you're curious, the chevron design apparently helps with viewing angles. Okay, so let's get back to some versions of the game that make sense. Here's what the game looks like when played on the screen inside of a 2022 Tesla Model 3. This screen is an LCD, though each subpixel has a slightly different size. I've read that the Model S has a bigger screen, but I don't know if the underlying screen tech is any different. Now let's take a look at the iPhone 13. This is a type of pentile subpixel geometry known as the diamond pixel. Pentile geometries are inspired by how the human eye works, with lots of green subpixels because that's the color our eyes are most sensitive to. This type of geometry can lead to weird artifacts if the pixels aren't small enough, but it's currently the most popular geometry for OLED cell phones. This type of layout is pretty interesting and I'll leave some links in the description if you're interested in learning more about it. Also, here's what the game looks like on an iPhone under a drop of water. I had several commenters say in my previous video that they were able to see the subpixels after putting a drop of water on their screen. And they weren't kidding, a bit of water adds some nice magnification, and this is kind of a cool way to see the game. And for completeness sake, here's what the game looks like on an iPhone prior to their conversion over to OLED screens. I'm not sure which version of iPhone this is, but this geometry is just your standard RGB stripe subpixel geometry, the same one used on my iMac. Next up is the Apple Watch. Its screen was so small that I wasn't able to properly adjust the zoom, so the snake is twice as big as it should be. This subpixel arrangement is similar to the one we saw on the Nintendo Switch OLED, though there are a few differences. I'll put up a quick split screen so you can see for yourself. The penultimate design that we're going to look at is this one I found on a new Dell laptop. 
At first glance, it looks like your typical RGB stripe design, but if you look closely, you'll see all the subpixels tilt in one direction or the other. From what I've read online, this is to improve the way the screen looks when viewed at different angles. Okay, now for the final screen. This is the OLPC XO, or the One Laptop Per Child XO, which was released in 2007. It was designed for children in developing countries and was made to be ultra durable and ultra cheap. Its original goal was to cost $100 or less and to require so little electricity that kids could use a hand crank on the side of the laptop to give it more juice. Though this feature ended up being dropped sometime during development. Sadly this laptop was not a success and now these things are basically just collector's items. However, this laptop screen is the thing I find most interesting about it. It has two modes, a monochrome mode for use in sunlight and a backlit mode for use in darkness. When in backlit mode, each pixel becomes either a red, green, or blue subpixel along a diagonal line. You can see that demonstrated here. And to avoid color artifacts, a blurring algorithm is used. I'll put some links in the description if you're interested in a more in-depth rundown of the underlying tech. Anyway, here's what this snake game looks like on this screen in monochrome mode. And here's what it looks like as we change into backlit mode. It's kind of cool that this game runs on such an old device, though I did have to remove some of the modern JavaScript features I was using to get it to work properly. Also, this type of screen seems like a really creative solution for learning in different environments. It's a shame this laptop wasn't a success. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If there's any device you think I missed, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching.